Uh, and then we have a whole host of, of other capabilities that, that give you the binarizer, that you can make adjustments to your scenes and, and full capabilities within the color. So what I recommend to get more familiar with these is to, to play with these using your own footage so we have color to gray, essentially creating a, a monochrome image. You can adjust the color values, the red, green, blue. And any time you make these modifications, I highly recommend going to full size. And there's a great feature here the developers gave us. I can look at the original scene on the left and the effect or changed version on the right side of the screen. So it gives you a reference point to see just how far you're modifying or changing that. Uh, control image, doubler, dynamic range, fade in and out. You can flip it on the horizontal or vertical aspect. So as I click back into the special menu, you can see that right taking your system out of the box, you have a full capability of features that you can do right within your system. And there's a whole host of add-ons that you have. Some of you received effects packages one through four when you purchased your Casablanca. And so you can see that you have a whole host of other capabilities. So we've checked out the new menu and the special menu. We've played a little bit with the auto split function and the trim function. Uh, delete will simply delete. If you find that you've got a clip and it just doesn't work, you don't need it around any longer, you click delete and it will get rid of it. If it's one of those uh, decisions that you perhaps regret, if you undelete or click the U-turn button before you power off, it will bring that clip back for you. Okay? So it's, it's a permanent decision once I leave this scene bin or, or once I power off the system, but I can regain it right now. This, by the way, is, is one method as well. If you're working on a long documentary project, for example, and you've got long scenes that you're not using, you're certain you're not going to use in your finished presentation, after you split them out and delete them, that will get you back a little more room on your hard drive. Okay, so we've got our basic project up in work here. And we've covered many of the buttons here, the add, the remove of a clip. If I didn't want that in the scene, I simply click remove. We've looked at replace and search, the playback button, and the navigation buttons to scroll through your storyboard. There are two buttons that we haven't covered yet, and I want to cover them now. It's kind of stepping into our intermediate users. And this gives us the capability to do what's called a video insert. I'm going to go ahead and, and add this clip. This is a, a longtime Casablanca enthusiast, a great guy by the name of Mickey Jones, and you may have seen him in, in a number of, of films and television shows. The reason why I'm using him is he's going to talk about his Casablanca. So let me play the clip, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to illustrate or highlight what he's talking about by inserting a, a clip of the Casablanca unit on top of what he's saying. So before we play back uh, Mickey's soundbite to hear what's going on, uh, I, I realize I probably should trim this down a little bit first here to make it just the ideal clip. So I'm going to go ahead, take his scene, and I'm going to click trim. I'm going to trim out the first uh, 14 and a half seconds or so, which will take us to about uh, 15, 15, because 30 frames in a second and half of, there we go. And now let's play this back. So I went down to get a Casablanca. Well, I saw the Avio. I didn't see the Casablanca. Okay, so I want, I'm going to put the picture of the Avio DVD unit right in where he says, so I saw the Avio. So let's click stop and come back to the edit menu. Now remember, we've, we've trimmed this scene in the scene bin, but I still have the longer version up here. So this is the time for your quiz at home. Which button do I use to replace the scene below with the scene in the storyboard? Ding! That's correct, the replace button. So now we have the correctly timed version up here, and down here we have a, a still shot of the Avio. So I'm going to go ahead, and again, instead of clicking Add, which will put the picture of the Avio behind Mickey Jones, I remove that, and I'm going to click on Insert, which is putting this scene on top of Mickey Jones. If I back out right now, what happens is that scene is at the very first part of Mickey. It's not where I wanted it to have happen. Incidentally, if you see this icon in your storyboard, um, don't panic. That's simply the icon that tells you you have an insert. What probably happened is, is as you're getting started, if you've, if you've clicked on insert and you meant to click add, that's an easy icon to pay attention to. You simply remove it and you're back to square one. But again, I want to insert, and while I'm inserting, I want to make this adjustment. I'm going to change the position of this inserted shot. So I select position. 
and I want to hear what Mickey's saying, so I turn on the audio scrub, I turn on the speaker, and I'm going to scroll through the start. So I'm get a well, I saw, I saw the, 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 yeah, the, the, See, I'm able to scroll back and forth precisely where he says, so I saw the avio. I saw the avio. Perfect. Now, when the start or end button is selected, it'll play it again and again. I didn't see the Casablanca, so I got an avio. I bought Okay. Now, I want to trim this. I want to end this. Okay. Yeah, I didn't see the Casablanca, so I got an avio. I bought my first... Okay. First, first, right, when he, first, right when he says, so I bought an avio. Well... I saw the Well, I saw the Avio. I didn't see the Casablanca, so I got an Avio. Bro, beautiful, beautiful. Right on the spot where he says, so I got an Avio. So we come back, and this now is our finished piece. Mickey actually runs through all three of these scenes, but in the middle, the visual cuts away to the shot of the Casablanca Avio. Let's see and hear the result of our finished work. So I went down to get a Casablanca. Well. I saw the Avio. I didn't see the Casablanca, so I got an Avio. I bought my first Isn't that great? unit so from So this is, this is called a, a cutaway shot or a video insert, and it's used a lot in documentaries. It's used in broadcast journalism and newscasts, that kind of thing, where you have somebody talking about something, and you want to show what they're talking about. So this is a great technique for you to use in your production if you're not already using it. So that's, that's really a, a strong, quick taste of, of where we're at uh, it, working from the edit menu. And again, by, by practicing, by using the range of features and buttons available to you in Smart Edit 6 edit menu, you're going to become very proficient at creating quality productions. All right, so we're going to go ahead and leave the uh, edit menu. And again, we can right-click your trackball, or we can simply hit the main menu or go home button. And then... We're not finished yet because we're going to come through and we're going to add our transitions, uh, image processing effects, uh, play a little bit in titling before we finish our audio, then come back and finish out our production. These three are what we call the effects menus. And transitions uh, allow us to go from one scene to the next. Uh, we already have a transition here. And when I select a s two scenes in my scene bin, remember before we had one scene? Now there's two scenes because it's between those two scenes that we're affecting a change. And when I click playback, it's a hard cut from the scene of the fish to the shot of the jellies. So I right click to stop that playback and I want to add an effect. So let's go ahead and I'm going to select the default effects, the default effects to show you the basic set of effects. And uh, probably the most traditional is what folks would call the crossfade, otherwise known as a dissolve. Now when I click add, it adds that effect and you can see the icon now goes up here in the storyboard and this blue color tells me it's done. It's rendered as what we call a 2D effect. When I click playback, you're going to see us go from the wide shot of the fish to a nice crossfade or dissolve of, of the jellies. Now, all those clips with the little blue flag on them are what we call real-time or 2D effects. When you get to a clip or an effect where you don't have that, that little blue flag, that is called a 3D effect. And you'll notice there's a color change up here. This red color means that effect needs to be rendered or created or, or it needs to go to the processor because of the high image quality and the changes that have to be done. So here's my two-step process when you run into a, a 3D effect. You can click on the effect and add it, then click on preview and see what it looks like. Get a mini screen version. Okay? So there's a series of bars that move across. And many of these effects and transitions in the Casablanca menu give you lots of variables and choices. So I could have it move uh, coming down, and I can change the number of bars. Okay? So you have lots and lots of capabilities. I could even go to a full-size preview and select the whole effect and scroll through, and it'll show me those bars coming down. Isn't that cool? And I'm scrolling through, essentially, in real time, allowing me to see what this effect's going to look like on my footage. If I'm really happy with that effect, I would then click on the Create or Render button. Okay? And that, wow, that's quick. 
That's right. This is on one of the new Casablanca units, the Casablanca Renome. And the Renome Plus, 